I've got an in-depth two-part series on using impact. So if you would like a more slower and in-depth tutorial, then you can check the link up above here. But in this tutorial, we're going to try to run through the features, the most important that you need to know, pretty much the majority of them that you need to know to get started uh, working on your tracks. So I'm going to run through these really quickly because I'm going to try to cover everything in less than 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll press F6 to open the Instruments tab within our browser. Here within the Personas folder, our impact can be found here. I'll go ahead and just drag that in. And then I'm going to F5 to close out that browser. Now, the first thing that you want to take a note of is the mapping here. And this may be a bit confusing if this is your first time using Studio One and Impact. We start on B0. A lot of, if you're using a controller that has drum pads, a lot of them start on C1. So just know that uh, when we come to our presets where we can choose from up here, and then say we choose this one, we can see that that's going to load on B0. And any other presets that we load, they all start on B0 and then move up chromatically. Now you can set up your own mapping here to be more in line with the pads on your controller. The way that you would do that is by coming to the bottom here. We can start, be sure that this first one is highlighted. Click in this area here, then press the pad on your controller to input that in. It will automatically be in there. You can manually input that as well if you'd like. Uh, you could use your keys. If you don't have pads, you can press a key on your keyboard to put that in. If you want this pad to be triggered only by one pad or key on your controller, click this second field and then press your pad again. Click outside of that field and now we have this pad is going to be triggered by G sharp one on our controller. Now, after you go through and make all of the settings for the rest of the pads, you can come up to this icon here, store as a preset. And then from that point on, I've already done so. So if I come to my presets here, we've got my default, which starts on C1 and moves up chromatically. And from this point on, whenever we choose a kit down below, then it's going to always be set to the C1 and move up chromatically or whatever default that you're, you've chose. Now let's move on to the waveform display here. This We can choose uh, what portion of our sample that we have loaded in the pads is going to play. We can limit that playback if we'd like. And I'm actually going to press F9 to come to my files and then I'm going to grab a sample here and just drag that over to our pad. That is how we can load samples that we like into the pad. We can also click on this plus button, which is going to open up an explorer or finder window on the Mac. We can then navigate to the folder where we have our drum sounds and load it in that way as well. We can then use previous and next to navigate between the other sounds within that folder. Alt F5 to close out the browser. And now, We've got a new cell on here and we're talking about the waveform display here. So I can pull this in. If you come to the corner, you have that finger, you can pull that in. And you can see like so we can limit the playback and control that with this area here. We also have this bar here where we can actually zoom in. So if you click hold on this right area, then we can drag to the left and really zoom in there to make finer adjustments. Then we have a scroll here that we can use. Now it may be best to use your mouse wheel when you're using these. So if you just hover and turn that mouse wheel, then we can really have a bit more control over how these function. I'm using my mouse here as well because this zoom feature in particular is a little bit funky until you get used to it. But the mouse wheel just provides you with a bit uh, finer control there. Now we've got these two dials here, offset, start and end. Just know that this is going to, I'm going to, let me zoom out a bit. If you're working with samples, you may get some pops. And I'm going to actually try to force one, get this set on a peak here. 
So you hear that popping at the beginning there. We can come to the start or end. If the pop is at the start or if it's at the end, you want to make the adjustment at either one, whichever you're having a problem. Ours is on the start, so I'll just hover over this and use my mouse wheel. We're adjusting by a fraction of a second when we do this. And then you can just keep adjusting until you're able to get rid of that uh, popping. Now I could be here. Now that's a little bit better, but uh, ideally you'd want to just zoom in and then you wanna get this beginning on a zero crossing where we have not much going on with our waveform. And I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out a bit and then move our borders back out to their original positions. Now each pad we do have a solo and mute below here where you can apply that to any pad that you'd like. We also have an individual out so we can send each pad to an individual output and then mix those within the console. So this one is going on stereo four, we can click that and then we can see we can make a selection from these other areas here. Now keep in mind that you will need to check this area here. If we click, we can see that these, the stereo one through six have been made active. And then if I close out impact and F3 to open up the console, we can see stereo one through to stereo six. Now, if I come back here and activate mono one, two, and three, then we can see that these have now been added and are available to be sent out uh, for mixing. And I'll go ahead and open up Impact again, F3, and close out our console. Now moving over to the right here, we have Transpose and Tune. And now these controls are going to be specific to whatever pad that you have highlighted. So if we wanted to make a pitch or transpose this bass drum, then we can just come and we can click, hold, and drag, or we can use our mouse wheel to make adjustments here. And then this is gonna be in semitones and we can pitch up or down by an one octave each way. And then we have tune, which is going to make adjustments in sense. And we can do a hundred plus or a hundred minus. And then we can control click to return these parameters back to their original positions. Now down below that we have a filter section here where we can apply different filters to our sounds, our samples. So. So I can take this cutoff down and cut out some of those higher frequencies because we can see right here we are on a low pass filter and that's why we have that behavior. Now, if we click this down arrow, we can choose from a variety of filters here. If we choose the high pass, then we're going to be cutting out our lower frequencies. And then if I come back down to the left, we introduce those back in and we can power on and off this filter section by coming here and clicking on that lead. Now below the filter section, we have our amp area and we have our attack, hold and decay. And with the attack, hold and decay, we can basically control how our sound is going to be played back its levels over a period of time. So if we come back to this bass drum and I increase the attack, then that's going to gradually fade in. And this could be another method to use if you're having some sort of uh, distortion or clicks and pops at the beginning of your sample, you can kind of tweak this a little bit. And then as I bring the attack down, we're uh, back to the beginning of our sample there. Now the decay, and keep in mind that we have a readout here is set to infinity, infinity right now. And our attack has this display as well. So as I move this up, we can see that we're increasing our attack to 105 milliseconds here, and we can take that all the way up to infinity, uh, which is gonna be very slow, four seconds here, so you get the idea. Now the decay, we can take that down. And if I, let me use my uh, MIDI controller pad. So I'm just striking the pad and we see that it's, the playback is limited to what we have our decay set to. If I raise this back up, we're at 44 seconds. So you can see how you can make these adjustments depending on how long your sample is. 
Now we have pan here. That's pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. I'll control click to take that back to its original position. We have volume control here. And this is actually the first place that you wanna make volume adjustments when you begin your mixing process within the actual device itself. And then below these parameters, we have a stretch factor. And this stretches or compresses our uh, sample so that we can control the playback speed of our sample without altering its pitch. So just to give you an idea here, if we come back to our two piano chords there, so say we're having a tough time getting that to fit within our track, and we'd like to speed it up a little bit. So the way this works is that the stretch factor is set by one by default. If I were to put in two here and press enter, then we can see our waveform has kind of adjusted a bit here. And this is gonna play back twice as fast. while keeping the same pitch. Now, if I were to put in 0.5, now you can see that we have the same pitch, but it's being played back even slower. If we take that down to a quarter, I'll do 0.25. This may not actually sound good. We're starting to get a bit of our artifacts in here, so you have to be careful with how much you're adjusting with the stretch factor, but you can get an idea of what's going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to one and press enter. And next we're gonna take a look at the choke and I'm gonna press F9 to come back to the samples and just load in, I'm gonna bring in a longer sample here. So we can set up choke groups with this here. So we have a pretty long sample there and I just wanted to make this obvious. If we, we have a choice between one, two, three, or four, these are gonna be the different groups that we can set up. We can set up to four groups. I'll choose one for this, come to the clav, and I'll put that into choke group one as well. And now when I trigger this chime, I can stop the playback with uh, the clavs there because they're in the same choke group. And I'll go ahead and take that off of the clavs. Now near the bottom here, we have a play mode and by default, this is gonna be on one shot poly. So this basically means as many times as you strike the pad, it's going to, it's gonna be, uh, you can play back as many times as you'd like. So if I come to the bass drum or the chords, It's gonna keep playing as much as we trigger. If we were to change this to one shot mono, then we can see that it's going to cut itself off. Only one, it's gonna be monophonic. Only one sample at a time can play back here when we trigger the pad. We next have toggle. Let me change my mapping here. So when we press, we start playback. If we press again, we stop. And then the final one that we have is note on, note off. Now we can actually layer our drums uh, within these pads. So if I come to the clap there, let me come to some drum samples. Now, what we wanted to do if, so say we'd like to load more than one sample within this pad, we can hold down shift, find our sample, hold down shift, and I'll go ahead and drag that over here. And now you can see we have this gray bar that appears. This is our one sample, and this is the new one that we brought in. If I select here, that's the original one. So now this bar, we can move to adjust at what velocity level these will play back. Right now it's in the center. So, so if I am using the pad on my controller, if I play, play this softly, 
we get that clap. Now, if I uh, strike the pad a bit harder, then we get that snare. And then we can kind of adjust the sensitivity of when these are going to play back based on the velocity information it's receiving from our controller. And we can load up to three different samples for each pad. So I'll hold down shift and drag that there. Now we can see that we have three divisions here. And just know that we have this layer mode. So by default, this is going to be on velocity, velocity, and we can see how that behaves. Our velocity is going to determine how these samples play back within here. But we have a couple other options. We can choose round robin. So now when I trigger this pad, it's going to cycle between the three different samples. If we choose random, then it's going to randomly play, play back between the three samples. Okay, and so I'm pretty sure that that was less than 15 minutes. I didn't pay attention to the start of the time, but uh, we covered a lot of ground here. And if you're, if you just got Studio One and you're trying to figure out impact, I hope that this was able to give you a kickstart in uh, getting your drum tracks out. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.